Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Igor Tego Mudisurabzuma. And today I will present it again about metal forming processes. And I'm from Universitas Udayana. And my uh, college number is 2105536 Okay, before we go to the presentation, I want to mention about my references. Most of my references from um, Handbook of Manufacturing Process, how product components and materials are made by James G. Brola. And another is from other website and journal from Google. Okay, in today's video, we're gonna talk about three topics. The first one is milling, the second one is screw threads, and the last one is broaching. Okay, first one is milling. So milling is a means of creating a desired surface with a rotating multi-tooth cutter. So each tooth of the cutter removes material as the workpiece advances against it. So the axis of rotation of the cutter may be either horizontal or vertical. So the cutter can provide cutting action on its side or at its end of the face or both. So the cutter rotates rather rapidly and its position is normally stationary. So the work moves moves past the cutter with the suitable depth of cut at a relatively slow feed rate. So milling is the most common machining operation for producing flat surface. So but slots and con contour or stepped surface and screw threads can also be produced. Okay, the first subtopic for milling is face milling. So face milling is produce a flat surface at a right angle to exist of rotation of the cutter. Depending on the depth of the cut, some machining also take place on the periphery of the cutter. So for flat surface, face milling is generally preferable to peripheral milling. From the standpoint of tool economy, simplicity of setup and a cutter rigidly, however, the operation is limited to flat surface. The second subtopic from milling is peripheral milling. So, this milled surface is flat, is parallel to the axis of rotation of the cutter, and is produced by cutting teeth located on the periphery of the cutter body. The operation is usually performed on horizontal spindle machine. So the milling cutter or cutters are mounted on a arbor that has outbound support. The surface may be flat or contoured depending on the profile of the cutter. So flat and contour surface slots and keyways are machined by this method. So you can see the the example uh, photos show both peripheral and face milling. Okay, the third subtopic for milling is end milling. So this end milling uses a cutter commonly of smaller diameter with teeth on both the end face and periphery. So the approach is versatile in that slots, resist and profile can be machined. So machining can be also carried out in areas not accessible to other type of cutters. However, the lack to diameter ratio of end mills is high and they can be support only at one end so they are less rigid than cutters for other milling methods. So lighter feeds may be required to reduce cutter deflection. So material removal rates are less than with other milling methods and accuracy may be not be as great as use the cutter. So the fourth subtopic is slab milling. So slab milling is peripheral milling with cutters that produce a flat surface over a wide area. So the axis of rotation of the cutter is parallel to machine surface. So the cutter often remove large amounts of materials. Sometimes two or more cutters are used per arbor with opposing helixes to balance cutting forces. So we're going to the fifth subtopic for milling is form milling. So form milling with, with, 
is when the parallel cutting edge of the milling cutters are ground with a form rather than in a straight line. That form is transferred to the workpiece as the milling operation proceeds. So the operation is called from milling. Milling of gear teeth is a common application of this approach of the form milling. So we're going to the sixth subtopic from milling is gang milling. So gang milling is simply milling with more than one cutter on the arbor of the milling machine. So they produce multiple surface on the workpiece with one pass of the cutters. So also see straddle milling as follows from the example photos. We can see plain milling center, side face milling cutters, arbor to go to the workpiece. Then a gang milling operation is can be produced. And we're going to the seventh subtopic from milling is straddle milling. So straddle milling, we can see as the example photos, involves the use of two cutters, one on on one arbor with a space between them. So the two surfaces are cut in one pass, but the area between them is not machined. As we can see, the workpiece and side milling cutter is on the right and spacing colors, arbor and machine tables, we can drag it to the to the left of straight straddle milling. Next we're going to the eighth subtopic from milling is fly cutter milling, which is fly cutter milling is involved the use of a single point cutter rather than a multiple tooth cutter to perform a milling operation. So it, it is a phase milling with only one cutting tooth. The method is useful for producing flat surface in a tool room situation where the optimum multiple tooth cutter may not be available. Obviously, cutting feet weights are much less than with face mills, but may be satisfactory. Windfly cutters are the only tools available, and required requirement are for only one piece or small quantity. Okay. Still in milling, we're going to the nine subtopic is pin routing. As we can see, the pin routing uh, example photos at the right is initial roguing second tool ready for roguing simulators balance roguing simulators grooving put tools before drilling and entering operation then once the drilling operation has start it's time start to be turning operation but tools cut simulatorlessly and initial milling operation and phase thread milling is on wrap so after that, this pin routing is involved the use of a template guide, the movement of high speed routing cutter, a small diameter and end mill. So typically, the process is used to blank flat stock of sheet metals or other materials. Stack of head, stack of thin material can be cut by this method to produce a multiple part. Tenth subtopic from milling is spot facing. So spot facing is a simple operation that normally is used to provide small flat bearing surface perpendicular to the axis of a hole. So for bulb head or nut, an end cutting rotating tool is fed into the workpiece along the axis of the bolt hole. So often with a drill press rather than a milling machine so this depth of cut is often not critical as long as the surface machine is flat and perpendicular to the axis of the black of the bolt hole so the operation is the same counter boring except that the depth of the cut is shallow only enough to create a flat machine surface so it most commonly performed on castings and forgings where the surface prior to the operation has some irregularity. So we're going to be the second topic from the presentation, which is a screw threads. So screw threads, as you can see in the example object, screw threads are made with a large number of different, different methods, involving both machining, cutting, and forming process. 
So cutting method include the use of hand operate tabs and dies for internal and external threading. And machine for a single point screw thread cutting, thread cutting, die halves, thread milling, and thread grinding. Forming methods include rolling of external thread and cold forming of internal threads. First subtopic from in screw threads is um, hand die external threading. So this hand die external threading is a typical external hand threading die. These are called bottom or acron dies and are useful for cutting screw threads in prototype and limited quantity production. So the die is placed on the end of the screw plane and is rotated with a wrench like a tool. So it fill it fits itself forward at the lead rate of the screw as it cuts the threads. So second subtopic from screw threads is internal thread tapping. So this internal thread tapping is in utilized taps. The tap is rotated like a drill or a rimmer and is self fed actually into the hole in the workpiece create an internal thread. Taps can be positioned and fed manually and rotate with a hand tool or can be used with a drill press like automatic screw machine with a tapping attachment or a special tapping machine. So tapping machines and attachment have the caps capability of reversing the rotation of the tap to remove it from the work after the thread cutting is complete. So these solid tapes taps are used for internal threads of 0.050 in or 1.2 mm to 6 or 152 mm 5 diameters. So collapsible taps automatically react, retract the cutters to clear the new threads and do not have to reverse the removal but are not available for diameters less than about 11.4 11 per 4 inch or 32 millimeter so they are five usable for diameters up to about 24 inch or 600 millimeter going to the third uh, subtopic from screw threads is single point screw thread cutting so it's the lead operation a form cutting tool that has a profile corresponding to that of space or space between the required screw threads makes repeat passes along the workpiece so the cutter is attached to the latter carriage and is moved longitudinally along the bed by the lead screw which is which is geared to provide the rotational rate need to produce a screw of the proper pitch. Both external and internal thrust can be generated by the, this method as shown schematically. Method is used for large screw as we can see in the example photos for which die heads are not available or impractical when quantities are small or when the material is difficult to machine. Okay, we're going to the fourth uh, subtopic from screw threads is thread cutting and die heads. So, uh, these are efficient, accurate, and widely used in production threading. So they are used on all kinds of leads and screw machine on a drill press and as part of a special threading machine so have sets in insertable multi tube cutters that are changeable when different pitches of thread are to be machined or when the cutters need re sharpening like button dies die heads are self feeding at the lead rate of the thread so at the end of the cut the cutters retract automatically for rapid withdrawal so perhaps the large single the largest single application is pipe threading on special small machines 
that can be transported to building construction sites. So the fifth subtopic is thread milling. So thread milling is utilizes a form milling cutter. So both the work piece and cutter rotate. Most cutters are the multiple rib type, but single rib cutters are also used. So tough, tough cutting one thread at a time requires more time. This method applicable to both internal and external threads. So in internal thread milling, the cutter diameter should not exceed one per three of the whole diameters. So the thread milling is used in situation where die head cutting or tapering is difficult. For example, in difficult to machine materials, long threaded length, high helix angle, angle threads, or larger coarse pitch threads. So however, milling is not suitable for square threads or other with a flank angle nearly 90 degrees from the axis. So we're going to the sixth subtopic from screw cuts, which is thread grinding. So thread grinding is used when particular accuracy and surface smoothness are required. When heat threaded work piece are threaded, or when the material is otherwise difficult to machine, thread are ground in stainless and tool steels and its centered iron components, particularly when they have been heat treated for hardness or are used in precision so applications such as adjustment screw and fit screw boat counter type and central cylindrical grinding machine are used so the wheels may be dressed to grind multiple ribs or a single rib in either mode the workpiece move actually across the wheel as it rotates with center type grinding several paths are usually required so the center type grinding can be used on short runs but is not limited or too small quantity production with centerless grinding the wheel is always dressed for multiple rib grinding the rock piece is first ground to the correct diameter and then the threads are made as the work pass across the wheel so centerless thread grinding is more of a high production method so used when quantities are 10 or 15 thousand per lot or more process times are very short but setups require more times so the seven subtopic from screw thread is thread rolling so it's a code forming method for making external screw thread the blank work piece is rolled between opposing dies which have a negative screw thread profile so the dies may be flat or cylindrical so die heads somewhat similar in appearance to cutting die heads are often used but this unit have hardened rolling tools in place of the cutters a third method allows several blanks to be run at the one time between a cylindrical die and a concave die in a planetary fashion. With all this process variation, the screw thread produced of a high quality with an accurate thread. The smooth surface finish. No material is waste and they and there are strength advantage because of the cold working of the workpiece material. However, the diameter of the blank to be threaded must be accurate for the finished part to have the correct pitch diameter. The operation is rapid and particularly suited to mass production of thread fasteners. Okay, we're going to the last subtopic from screw threads, which is called from tapping of internal threads. So this code from tapping of internal threads differs from tapping with cutting taps as described above. In that the workpiece metal flows rather than being cut and removed to form the threads. But kind of taps are used in essential the same way and they look somewhat similar. A coat forming tap is illustrated like you can see in the example photos. Coat forming tap produce strong screw threads. But the threads form fill only 65% or less of the space of full threads. 
soft and ductile materials must be used and tapping speeds are highest than with cutting tops. So we're going to the third topic from the video which is broaching. So broaching is a high production machining operation that involves the one-way movement of a branch broach and the cutting tool with the series of progressively stepped teeth. The teeth move parallel to the surface being machined and each one removes a precise amount of material. The action is similar to that of a shawl except that each tooth is set slightly higher than the one that precedes it and is wide enough to machine to entire surface. As with the saw, the space between the teeth hold the chip until the teeth pass from the workpiece. So one pass of the brooch result in the completion of operation and the brooch can be pulled or pushed across the work. Broaching is used to machine holes, particularly non-round holes, flat surface, splints, and slides. One common application is the machining of keyways in pulls, pulleys, and gears. The initial teeth to contact the workpiece are often designed to provide rowing, roughing cut, while the teeth, final, final teeth provide finishing to the dimension desired. In that way, the operation can provide both high accuracy and excellent surface finish. And then, this operation in rapid and particularly suit the mass production condi condition. So, operation skill requirement and not high because they need precision in incorporate incorporate into the brushing tool. However, brushing are expensive and this is why brushing is chiefly found in a mass production situation where the tool and cost can be amortized. However, some internal shapes are not practical or machined by other methods and that is why brushing is commonly used for keyways. Splinted shape holes the vault slots and fire tree shape are turbine blades. The equipment requires for broaching range for simple arbor press or kiwi broaching to huge special machine used in the automotive industry for surface machining, engine blocks and other large component. Holes are small as 1.3 mm and surface as large as 0.5 mm wide have been machined with this method for a while. So we're going to the first subtopic from broaching, which is internal broaching. So internal broaching is machining by broaching the inside surface of hole or other opening in the workpiece. The most common broaching operation produces keyways, we say, or key slot openings in blocks, splinted shape openings and other non-round enlarge enlargement of holes in pulleys, gears, or other parts that are be fastened or shoved. There must be initial hole or opening in the workpiece to provide room for entry of the brooch. Helical surface can be cut with helical brooch if the workpiece is rotate as the brooch advance. So we're going to the second subtopic from broaching is external broaching which just takes place when the broaching tool machine and outside surface of workpiece example are the machining of flat surface, cam surface, and gear, or ratchet teeth. As we can see the internal, external approach example at the uh, four point. Now we're going to the last set topic for broaching, which is a pot broaching. Is a use a ring or tubular shape broaching tool with the cutting teeth on the inside. Normally, the workpiece is pushed through the tool with hydraulic force, and the tool cuts the entire workpiece per pair in one pass. So, machining of gear teeth is typical application. So, that's all from my presentation. 
thank you for watching and see you guys on the next video bye bye